Welcome to another Tech Stuff Tuesday. This week is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to make a list of the top 10 Tech Stuff Tuesday videos that you should be watching of the 52 that I have made at the time of this video. They are not in any particular order. They are not the most viewed. But I'm going to tell you which ones you should watch and why. And the first one is the biggest 10 inch sub video. Now that one is the most watched Tech Stuff Tuesday video, not our highest watched video, but our highest Tech Stuff Tuesday video. And the reason you should watch this is it's pretty ridiculous. It's using something that wasn't necessarily custom to begin with, but turning it into something custom. Uh, there wasn't one of these made before, so I had to modify some parts to make it work. I made it for a very specific purpose of uh, higher frequency music. They need a lot of power. Uh, they needed to be able to play about 40 hertz and up. Below that didn't matter. Most of the focus is on 45, 50 hertz. Uh, these went to Trinidad. I made two of them. Uh, so that one was very purpose built and some people didn't quite get it. Um, I did mention that in the video, but uh, it is pretty weird to see something where the motor is actually bigger than the basket. And it's uh, pretty ridiculous. Uh, the voice coils, we know what you did. Technically, it's not a Text of Tuesday video. I made that before the Text of Tuesday video series. Uh, that one's still pretty important. Um, it kind of shows how you can look at a coil and tell exactly what happened. So, like, we might get something uh, in to be recount, and they go, I don't know what happened. It just it failed, it stopped playing. I can look at that and I can tell you why and I show you all the things to look for and uh, why it does what it does. So you can have an understanding of what happened. If you blow a sub, you can tear it down. You can look at it and go, oh, I was clipping it. I didn't realize I was clipping it. It might have been just a little bit, but it still was enough to do it. Maybe you just had way too much power. Maybe you thought the sub would take more power than it did and uh, it obviously couldn't. Maybe it couldn't even take rated power. That's something you can find out by looking at that coil and that video will tell you how. The truth about the Rockville K9 part two. Now, there's a reason I'm referencing part two specifically. Part one is good, part two is better. It shows real testing conditions. It, it does kind of look at some things that they claim, but it's looking at what is on manufacturer website, um, temperature ratings, power ratings, that kind of thing. And it's putting those to the test with actual data, not subjective, not this is a thousand watt sub, so I can put a thousand watt amp on it and it did this or didn't do this. It's actual power, actual temperatures, and seeing exactly what happens. So that's another thing that you could do yourself with some test equipment to really see if everything is what the manufacturer claims it is. And if it's not, then you know it's not really giving you what you paid for. Sub break-in myth busted. This is the first Tech Stuff Tuesday video that I did, and I did it as a result of uh, Exo Contralto posting something, and there was a lot of different opinions uh, from different people on why you should or should not break in a sub, and I show you exactly why you should or should not break in a sub. Watch the video, you'll find out. Very solid information there. If you look in the comments, you'll see a lot of people agree, and you'll see some people that err on the side of caution, but they aren't proving what the video says to be wrong. Are old subs better than new ones? Part two. Part one looks at outside of an enclosure, just checking it uh, for sensitivity and that kind of thing. And the argument was old subs are more efficient and you're I was way louder with less power and I was doing 160s with 300 watts and 210s and part two addresses all of that because you change several different things between then and now, but also puts in a real world application showing what really happens in a car with direct swaps between new subs and old subs going all the way back from the early 90s all the way up through today. So check that one out. It's a very interesting result. Your box modeling software is wrong. I still get people that I know have not seen this video 
because they say, well, the manufacturer says this is the box, but I plug it in this software and it says this should be the box. Or they build a box off of the software and then they say, well, this doesn't play low or this isn't this loud or whatever. They're not getting the result that they expected and they come to me either asking why or they're comparing sub to sub saying this one's better because I modeled it in this software. So this one's gonna be 3DB louder than this one. You should check that video out. See the results of what really happens. I took actual results from testing in car, then compared it to modeling. I didn't model it and then build it. I took a build and then I modeled it. How the surround affects cone area and displacement. I still get a lot of people that think if it has a big surround on it, you're missing out on output. You may not understand exactly why there's a big surround or how it affects the output. That video goes in detail as to what you're gaining, not gaining, the benefits of doing a larger, taller surround versus not doing that. So check that one out. A lot of good information in there uh, so you can make a better informed decision on what sub you should get or for what purpose. How impedance changes in enclosure. Almost daily, I see comments, get messages, all kinds of stuff about how they might need to wire to a quarter ohm because their impedance rise goes up to one ohm and they wanna do this daily. Uh, that video will explain to you what really happens with a sub in an enclosure and a real world usage on why you should or should not wire below recommended impedance so you can have a better understanding of what you're dealing with or will your amp even take it. A watt is a watt or is it? In that video I took a super cheap amplifier and I took a more high quality amplifier and I showed the difference on an SPL meter, on an RTA, everything, of cheap power versus, I don't even wanna say expensive power, I would say better value power. Just a good solid amp and a cheap amp, not by ratings, but actually producing the same power and the result that you get in car. So go check that one out. It may change your outlook on what amps you should be buying. And the 10th one, which again, these are no particular order. Make your own distortion detector. I've had a bunch of people send me messages saying they made one of these and it's great and it cost them less than $25. And now they have a much better sounding system. Some said that they were clipping, they didn't even know it. So go check that out. Uh, it's definitely a tool that you can make yourself. It's very easy. You can have the satisfaction in making your own tool. It works out very well. You can use it on everybody's system. There's no owner's manual. There's no anything with it that can be confusing or daunting. It's just super easy to use. Works incredibly well. Go check that one out. Make one yourself. And if you do, comment in that video. Let me know how you like it. Do you think there's a video of the last 52 that should have been on this list and aren't? Comment that below. And don't forget to check out the yard sale where we've got complete subs, sub parts from motors, baskets. Uh, we've got sound deadener. We've got all kinds of stuff. Go check out the yard sale section. Best deals to be had on random stuff we've got laying around. Right now, we've still got 15% off using coupon code viral at checkout for 15% off all EMF audio products that we have in stock. We also have Banhammer V2 pre-order available on the website. I also wanna give a shout out to all the Patreon contributors, especially Kendrell Holly. Uh, he's been a contributor for, I think since we started the Patreon stuff, and that is in the link below. Uh, but he also has been a subscriber of the channel for I think six or seven years. Uh, so shout out to him. And if you'd like to contribute, you can do that in the link below. Make sure you're shopping for all your car audio needs on emfcaraudio.com. 
We've got Sundown Audio, XS Power, EMF Audio stuff, SBC stuff, audio control, everything you could possibly want except for cheap garbage we've got on emfcaraudio.com. And I will see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.